this is you, this is the beach, and this is you walking along the beach when you saw a beautiful sunset, someone so you took a photo of it. Good stuff. Scene 2. This is you, this is your friend. You were showing him the photo you just took, but hang on a minute, did you see the issue here? Of course you do. You and your friend live in different cities, and you're only talking for a phone, so you can't show him the image, like, physically. Okay, maybe I'm not the best playwriter. I have to admit that the years I spent with Shakespeare was deeply traumatising. But getting back on topic, phone calls are made for transmitting audio and not images. However, there are ways that it can be done, so go ahead and have a think. The obvious approach would be to split the image into pixels and then the colour of each pixel can be transmitted to your friend, which sounds great until you realise the sheer inefficiencies of this method. 1920 by 1080 image contains just over 2 million pixels and even if you manage to pronounce one hex colour code a second, which is pretty quick, it will still take over 3 weeks non-stop for the image to be received. You better figure out a quicker way before your friend hangs up and you're again lonely and sad and lonely. Here's a way to cheat in our game of image transmission via phones. With this strat, your friend can receive more information than what you've sent him. How is this possible? Top to bottom, sky, sun, ocean, horizon halfway through, sun centered just above horizon, ocean dark blue, sky orange, light to dark gradient, sun bright orange with flares, and that's it. How incredible it is for 30 words to represent 2 million pixels. To achieve this, not only does your friend have to know what the sky and sun looks like, he also have to make words out of this weird noise you speak and the meaning out of your words. A computer can never transmit image with this human method, right? It's called a web browser. It works similar to what we just did. Here's a web page and here's a screenshot of the same web page. They look exactly the same. Why? Because one, that's how screenshots work and two, a page it's just a more efficient way of transmitting an image. When you visit a page, it starts out in the networking component of the web browser, sending a request to the server. Now the server could just respond with a screenshot of the page you're looking for. So we're going to use a slightly different format. Introducing HTML, where items are listed from top to bottom. Logo, search bar, buttons. Now the site got everything we want, but it still looks ugly and uninviting. Throw in some CSS and fix the formatting, align everything to center, round out the corners and give some spacing to everything. The website is ready to be sent, and the server now responds with the HTML and CSS representing the page content. Back in your web browser, the same process happens in reverse. The networking component receives a bunch of ones and zero bytes from the server and decode them into their original text content. These texts are then passed to the rendering engine. The rendering engine understands the language of HTML and CSS, so the original web page can be reconstructed. And finally, the image of how the page should look like is then rendered to the browser window for you to see. Currently the web page looks good, but it sort of just sits there doing nothing. If you want buttons to actually do something, a programming language is what you need. In the web browser, there's only one such language available, and that's JavaScript. Without going into much detail, JavaScript is run whenever you click a button, whether it's the subscribe button down there, or this hamburger menu in the corner. Any button that do stuff runs JavaScript in some way. The full picture is that JavaScript is much more powerful and it's used everywhere. It is precisely because it is used everywhere, I cannot show you all its use cases. Similar to how rendering engines understand HTML and CSS, the JavaScript engine understands and runs JavaScript. So wrapping everything up, the networking component rendering and JavaScript engines makes up the browser engine. And then on top of that, different browsers would include their own unique UI. Some browsers 
specifically Firefox, even allows users to create their own UI. While there are a large number of Chromium-based browsers to compensate for the lack of theming support. And there you go, how browsers work, why it works the way it does. I hope you find the topic of browsers intriguing, in case you want to dive deeper into this topic. I've put some useful links in the description. And I'll be making one more video focusing on browser politics. I'll be talking about how Google is planning to kill off the remaining ad blockers and some more reasons to be using Firefox instead. Anyways, I'll be seeing you in two weeks. Bye!